Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Moreira from Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be talking about majority opinion. This is the first problem from the January 2024 bronze contest. All right, so in this question, we've got N cows, and each cow has an initial hay preference for the type of hay they want to eat. But cows can be persuaded to eat a different type of hay uh, if they exist in an interval where the majority of cows want to eat that type of hay. So for example, uh, in this interval, the majority of cows want to eat hay type two, so this cow can be persuaded to eat hay type two. And our goal is to determine how many types of hay all cows can be persuaded to eat. Uh, so we already noticed that cow one can be persuaded to eat hay type two, right? This interval, the majority of cows in it want to eat hay type two, so cow one can be persuaded. Likewise, if we look at this interval, the majority of cows want to eat hay type two, so these two cows can be persuaded. And if we look at this interval, the majority of cows want to eat hay type two, so these three cows can be persuaded. So it is certainly true that hay type two, uh, every cow can be persuaded to eat. And the same argument holds for hay type three, uh, because we can do a similar thing where we take one of its neighbors, include it in that interval, and now this cow can be persuaded to eat hay type three. And now we get a slightly larger interval, so we convince a few more cows, and it'll expand in the same way it did previously. So two and three, um, all the cows can be persuaded to eat those. And what do you notice about uh, what's significant about those two types of hay? Well, we can see that uh, there are two cows eating the same type of hay right next to each other. And from, from that, we can see that they can expand to all of the cows by just looking at, okay, this cow and its neighbor, okay, that forms a majority three interval. So we convince one more cow, then we convince one more cow, and so on. So we can see that anytime we have two cows in a row eating the same type of hay, that's going to lead to um, our hay type being able to uh, persuade all cows. Are there any other cases? We should always ask this question. So maybe we've already solved the problem, but there's one more case. And this the case is uh, where we have two cows separated by one cow. So we can see here that both the, second, the third to last and last cow want to eat hay type four. If we look at this interval, the majority of cows want to eat hay type four. So we can see that this could become this. And now, uh, we could make the same argument as before. We now have two fours in, in a row, so we could expand it to cover the entire interval. So the two cases we want to think about, so that means hay type four is also a possible hay type that all cows can be persuaded to eat. Um, so the observation, it, either we have two cows in a row, the same hay type, or we have almost two cows in a row. So um, one cow eating the same hay type as one cow that's distance two away. So two cows eating the same hay type distance two apart. And these are the only two possibilities that lead to um, all cows being able to pers be persuaded to eat that hay type. Why is that true? Well, you could think of it this way. If I have a an uh, sort of an interval with a majority element, so for example, uh, this is an example of an interval with a majority element, right? The majority of the elements are one. Either the majority element alternates like this, so it goes one, a different value, one, a different value, or if it doesn't alternate, you can see that there has to be at least two ones positioned next to each other, right? So if you don't have this alternating pattern, there has to be at least two ones next to each other. So for any interval where there's a majority element, one of these two cases will occur. So we can just loop over the array and count all the times that this case, one of these two cases occur. So let's dive into the code here. Uh, note that in this problem, we have T subcases per test case. So we're just going to read in t, and then we're going to loop over uh, the solution function t times. So all of our code 
is going to be going into this solution function. So let's begin by reading in our input. So we're going to start by reading in n, the number of cows, and then we're going to read in that hay array. So this is just the initial preferences of all of the cows. So for i in uh, from an input dot split, right? Uh, if you're in C++ or Java, right, you just loop over these n numbers and read them into an array manually. Great. Now we're going to declare a possibilities array. It's going to be a length n array initialized to be all zeros. And the goal of this possibilities array is to store which hay types are valid or which hay types all cows can be persuaded to eat. If you know what a set is, you can use a set here alternatively, and that works just as well. But the idea is uh, it's going to start at all zero, and any time we find a valid hay type, we're going to update that hay type's entry to be one. So we're now ready to loop over the hay array, and we're going to check uh, next uh, these both these cases. So we're going to check cows next to each other and cows that are distance two apart. So if hay i is equal to hay i plus one, then we know that the hay type i is going to be one of the valid hay types. So we're going to set possibilities hay i minus one equal to one. So this is just flagging for later that hay type i is going to be one of the valid hay types. Likewise, we also want to check if hay i is equal to hay i plus 2. Then if this is true, we also know that hay i is going to be one of those valid hay types. There is a small bug here, however. Uh, when we're adding 2 to i, we could get an integer. Uh, we could get an index out of bounds error. So we just want to make sure that i is small enough so that we don't go out of bounds by adding this condition. So if i is less than n minus 2, then we're safe to check this condition. All right, so now that we've uh, stored which hay types are valid, we're just going to loop over the possibilities array and store all of the valid hay types in a dynamic array. So I'm just going to have valid. Uh, it starts empty. So you, in Java, you'd want this to be a vector. Or in, or sorry, in C++, you'd want this to be a vector. In Java, you'd want to be, this to be an array list. Um, and we're going to loop over the possibilities array. And any time we see a 1, we're going to add that hay type to the valid array. So if possibilities i is 1, we're going to append to valid the hay type i plus 1. Uh, note that the minus 1s and the plus 1s here are just go switching back and forth between 0 indexing to access an array and 1 indexing uh, because all of the problem statements are counting from 1 to n, while all of our arrays are counting from 0 to n minus 1. Once we have this valid array, there are two cases. If the length of the valid array is equal to 0, then we know that there are no valid hay types, so we print out negative 1. Otherwise, we just print out the valid array. In Python, you can do just star valid. Uh, alternatively, you could just loop over the valid array and print it out manually. So let's save our code and upload it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, we'll fix any bugs. So let's try this out and submit it to the grading server. And from what we can see, looking good so far, we can see that we're passing all of those test cases. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. See you guys in the next video.